Hello, detective. Is there a reason you're interrupting me mid-soup? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 perfectly cast TV characters. I will see you tomorrow at lunch. I am looking forward to lunch and hearing about what a great boss I am. <laughs> for this list, we'll be looking at characters from TV shows we couldn't imagine being played by anyone else. And to be fair, we're only choosing one character per show. What TV character do you think was flawlessly cast? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Phil Dunphy, Modern Family The lovable idiot is a tried and tested sitcom character type that's been done well by many actors, and it usually results in that character being a fan favorite. In the age of modern television, nowhere is that more true than Ty Burrell's Phil Dunphy. I know all the dances to High School Musical, so... We're all in this together, yes we are. We're all stars, that's me something, you know it. As Phil, Burrell shows an infectious gleefulness in nearly every scene. And though his stupidity could have grown tiresome in the hands of another actor, he makes the character soar. Bring it, Laura. You want to test me? I've been tested my whole life. They could never find anything. It also helps that he's completely kind-hearted, a loving father and husband, and has some of the best comedic timing of anyone on the show. No wonder Burrell won two Emmys for his work. And let's face it, your mom can't keep her hands off me whenever the gun show comes to town. <laughs> a good one, Dad. <laughs> Humor makes difficult situations easier. Number nine, Violet Crawley. Downton Abbey. Mama, I'm sorry, no one told me you were here. Oh, such a glare. I feel as if I were on stage at the Gaiety. Considering Maggie Smith was already ingrained in the minds of most viewers as the strong willed Professor McGonagall in the Harry Potter series, it says a lot that she was able to so perfectly embody another character so soon. I want to know what you were doing at Downton. Well, I don't understand. Why shouldn't I come to Downton? I grew up here. I see I'll have to take the slow path. As Violet Crawley, Smith added some much appreciated comedic relief, and she delivered every line with feisty ferociousness that stole every moment she was part of. You are quite wonderful the way you see room for improvement wherever you look. I never knew such reforming zeal. I take that as a compliment. I must have said it wrong. <laughs> The Dowager Countess of Grantham never let her family forget who was in charge, even if her decisions could sometimes lead to her family's unhappiness. She believed she always knew best, and Smith wore that confidence phenomenally. How you hate to be wrong. I wouldn't know. I'm not familiar with the sensation. Number eight, Arthur Fonzie Fonzarelli. Happy Days. <laughs> Now, I would let him go unless you want to make medical history. Arthur Fonzie Fonzarelli is the epitome of a classic sitcom character. Undeniably cool and carefree, the rest of the characters on Happy Days usually look to him for answers. That's just how the character was written. But in the hands of Henry Winkler, the character has become a pop culture icon. Mr. Cunningham, you are holding on to my jacket. Well, what should I do? Let go of my jacket. <laughs> Hey, that's much better now. Because you're a friend of mine, I'll check him out. Oh, thanks. Yeah. With a naturally winning smile and more charm than anyone should ever have, Winkler took the character from a supporting role to the very reason to watch the show. His catchphrases and mannerisms are still referenced to this day. Happy Days surely wouldn't have been as big as it was without Henry Winkler. I mean, you break my roof. And then you sue me, you take me here to court, you lose the case, I put up $200 toward it, the kids get the rest of it. I mean, how come you don't get to pay anything? How come? Because I'm the Fonz, huh? Hey. Number seven, Captain Raymond Holt, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Andre Brower's dry and deadpan Raymond Holt 
was always the fantastic straight man to Andy Samberg's Jake Peralta, a true example of chaotic good. Permission to take a selfie of the two of us, sir? Permission denied. Too late. Ah, oh, that was a good one. Brower's delivery as the strict captain often brought some of the most surprising laughs, but it was when he shed this aspect that his performance was the most successful. Yes, you should be very proud of yourself. I know things aren't exactly where you want to be right now, but uh, I promise you they will improve. Thank you, Captain. Every time someone steps up and says who they are, the world becomes a better, more interesting place. So, thank you. Throughout the show, he grew closer to his detectives, showing sympathy towards their respective struggles. But the shenanigans of his subordinates would also rub off, and the character's trademark stoicism would clash hilariously with each ridiculous situation. Over the past month, I've had him trained to retrieve plaques. And now, boy, it's time to make Daddy proud. Yes, sir. I could not have been more clearly talking to the dog. <laughs> Brower was incredible in the role and deserves more recognition. Number six, Ron Swanson, Parks and Recreation. Speaking of perfect stoic and deadpan delivery, Nick Offerman as Ron Swanson may just be the king. Just give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Wait, wait, I worry what you just heard was, give me a lot of bacon and eggs. What I said was, give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Do you understand? A government worker who doesn't believe in the government and hates being around people are certainly clashing character values. But on the show, it had us in stitches. There's a sign at Rampsit Park that says, do not drink the sprinkler water. So I made some tea with it and now I have an infection. Sir? Sir, are, 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 are you listening to me, sir? Sir, I'm talking to you! Ron was the stern father of the office who had unbendable beliefs on how people should act. Always the outdoorsman, he was also undeniably the most conventionally manly character. And while this still would have made Ron a great sitcom character, it was Offerman's warmth that frequently shined through, earning him a spot on this list. Never half ass two things, whole ass one thing. Honestly, it's hard to tell where the character ends and the actor begins. Number five, Dana Scully, The X Files. Agent Mulder. I'm Dana Scully. I've been assigned to work with you. The X-Files is one of the most iconic shows to debut in the 1990s, and Gillian Anderson's Dana Scully is one of the reasons so many fans love it. Whereas I can respect and admire your passion, they will use it against you. Mulder, the truth is out there, but so are lies. At first glance, a skeptic of anything supernatural on a sci-fi show seems like a hard sell. But it's Anderson's sure-footedness in the role that made Scully such a strong character. It's not a question of if I should stay. I don't have a choice. For a majority of the show, Scully was a staunch believer in only what she witnessed, despite her Catholic upbringing. And playing against David Duchovny's Fox Mulder, anything but a skeptic, made the show soar to incredible heights. What do you want me to say? That you're right? That, that I believe it even if I don't? I mean, is that what you want? Is that what you think I want to hear? No. The show's writing is undoubtedly wonderful, but it's Anderson that made Scully one of the deepest characters on TV. Number four, Michael Scott, The Office. It could have been very easy for Michael Scott to be the villain of the show. An overbearing boss amusing himself while making others uncomfortable is pretty hate-worthy after all. Been a lot of fun talk about prison today but I am here to scare you straight. While the character definitely started out this way, Steve Carell's charm and love shined through. And let's face it, his comedic timing is so good, there's no way we could have actually hated him. Are they breathing? No, Rose, they are not breathing. And they have no arms or legs. Michael's obsession with being liked went from an annoying character quality to something that drew empathy from the viewers. In Carell's hands, Michael surprisingly warmed our hearts. And when he left in the show's seventh season, his absence was definitely felt. See you tomorrow, boss. Later, guys. Number three, Tony Soprano, The Sopranos. What line of work are you in? Waste management consultant. Movies have been giving violent gangsters the limelight for decades now, but the first TV gangster to truly show there was something more underneath the brutality was Tony Soprano. You know, I put food on the table. My father was in it. My uncle was in it. 
Maybe I was too lazy to think for myself. Don't get us wrong, he still did some pretty vile things, enough even to make a top 10 list. But his struggles as the leader of the DeMeo crime family were expertly navigated by the late, great James Gandolfini. Didn't Paulie tell you I ain't been feeling good? You know what, I wet my ass with your feelings. Thanks, thanks a lot. Tony was such a fundamentally flawed character, and Gandolfini sank into the role with such gusto that it earned him three Emmys in a row. The actor excelled at the ferociousness asked of him, but he was just at home in scenes that called for a softer touch. Still, I gotta be the sad clown for, for my friends, my family, and our brave front. Number two, Walter White, Breaking Bad. Walter White. <laughs> you got me. From one TV anti-hero to another, anyone who saw Brian Cranston play the goofy Hal on Malcolm in the Middle was surely surprised to find him in this intense crime drama. But that just goes to show how much talent Cranston actually has. You're goddamn right. Walter White's descent from mild-mannered chemistry teacher to power-hungry drug lord is one of television's most fascinating arcs. The show is overflowing with deceptive backstabs and intimidating speeches, all of which Cranston nails. You clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. There is a definite darkness in this character, and Cranston brought it to life, giving every line 110%. White is an easy character to hate, but Cranston made it so we couldn't wait to see him again. Stay out of my territory. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Dr. Fraser Crane, Cheers and Fraser. From Cheers supporter to star of his own show, Kelsey Grammer is a TV legend. Hello, Dr. Crane. I love your show, I'm a big fan. <laughs> Moira Rose, Schitt's Creek. Catherine O'Hara's hilarious performance lit up every scene. The top 11 photographs of Moira Rose with future murder suspects. Well, that's not what I'm looking for. Buffy Summers, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. A badass hunter captured wonderfully by Sarah Michelle Gellar. Stop it. You're a god. <laughs> Make it stop. Peggy Olsen, Mad Men, a big thank you to whoever cast Elizabeth Moss. The day you saw something in me, my whole life changed. And since then, it's been my privilege to not only be at your side, but to be treated like a protege. Chandler Bing, Friends. There's a reason he was everyone's favorite, and that reason was Matthew Perry. I'm telling you, you're gonna be dancing at my wedding before you're dancing at theirs. Yeah, well, I don't dance at weddings. <laughs> Why not? Because weddings are a great place to meet women, and when I dance, I look like this. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Tyrion Lannister, Game of Thrones. Do you know what I like about you? I honestly don't. You're not a hero. Oh. I've been heroic on occasion. Regardless of how the show wrapped up, there's no denying that Game of Thrones had a ton of great actors. And Peter Dinklage as the downtrodden yet brilliant Tyrion Lannister was always one of the show's highlights. How do you know this? That's what I do. I drink and I know things. Though he's much more handsome than the source material, Dinklage brought George R.R. R. Martin's character to life beautifully, taking him from drunken ne'er-do-well to conflicted politician and impressive strategical mind. And in a show that was packed with chilling monologues, Dinklage delivered some of its best. I wish I was the monster you think I am. I wish I had enough poison for the whole pack of you. I would gladly give my life to watch you all swallow it. Seriously, his speech while on trial for Joffrey's murder still gives us goosebumps no matter how many times we've seen it. There's simply no one who could have captured Tyrion so well. Turns out, far too much has been written about great men, and not nearly enough about morons. Doesn't seem right. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. I feel your pain, I see your 
dreamt.